Hi and welcome to the Oso Gecko channel. I'm Lisa and today's tutorial we're sewing the Victoria wristlet from Lauren at Mormy No. This was a really fun, easy pattern to sew. It's got a pocket at the front with two snaps. It's got a zip on the top. And inside it's got a zip pocket. I have deviated from the pattern a little. This can be made as a wristlet or a crossbody, um, but today I decided that I was going to make it as a clutch. So I've added this strap on the back to turn it into a clutch bag, which is great for your evening out or, I don't know, going to parties or something like that. So I'm gonna show you the extra step to add this. If you wanted, in the pattern instructions, it also tells you how to add an outside pocket to the back with a zip. It has card slots. If you're a beginner sewer, this is a really good pattern to get you started and get you out of making those tote bags. It's really user friendly. It tells you exactly how to add the zip to the top so as these little tabs don't get stuck in the sides. It's an amazing little pattern. So let's get started. Here are all my pieces. Let's just sit through there because some of these out of the way. Okay, so we've got the main panel pieces here. I've got two lining fabric and two outer fabric. Obviously, my outer fabric is cork, and my lining fabric is this super cute tulip pink fabric. It's from the Curiouser and Furiouser range. And I've been waiting for ages to use it. I've only actually used it once before, so it's been in my stash for ages. I'm super excited about using that one. Then we've got the oh, outer V-shaped pocket, which is outer in cork and lining. Again, this is from the Tulip Ink Curiouser and Curiouser range, so that's going to be nice. Then we've got find it. We've got the V-shaped accent, which is going to go on the front pocket. Again, this is cork, so really excited about using that. I haven't used this particular design before, so I'm really happy to be using that. It goes really nice with this lovely burgundy pink color. I've got my two pocket pieces there, which again, is that lovely tulip pink. Um, two zips with pulls found these amazing teacup zipper pulls i really really love them um, and they'll go brilliantly again with this alice in wonderland inspired curiouser and curiouser fabrics with the teacups so that was brilliant when i found those i've got my zipper tabs there and let's just move all this to one side now this was designed to be a wristlet but actually I'm going to make it into a clutch. So this is not part of the pattern. This is an extra that I have created myself. So all I've done is using the V-shaped overlay or the accent, all I've done is I've cut a piece to the same width, same dimensions, but not cut the V. And then using the center points, points from here and the center point here. I've just hand cut out a V top and bottom that's not quite as deep, okay? So as it leaves just over an inch, round about three centimeters, so maybe an inch and a quarter in the center, just to make it easier to hold. Now I've cut two of those. They're both from cork, but actually they're both going to be raw edges. That'll be a nice strap for a clutch. And there we have it. I'm going to be using this really bright pink Gutterman thread, which I love. And also, I will need two snaps, two magnetic snaps. That's for the front pocket. So that's all of my pieces. Let's get started. 
let's start preparing the zip. So this is the main zip and I've got my two zipper tabs. So all I've done is I've folded them in half and then folded the sides in to the middle and folded again. These are squares. So it doesn't matter which way around you fold them. Make sure that the ends of your zip are completely straight because that will make it much easier. And if you want, you can go ahead and burn the edges with a lighter. That will stop any fraying. It doesn't really matter too much, but it's just a little finishing touch that I like to do. So we're going to put that over the end. Make sure that the end of the zipper tape is at the end of your zipper tab. We're just going to clip that in place. Same on the other end. Put that on. Make sure it's straight. Clip that in place. And then we're just going to stitch those two on. Okay, so I've just stitched those and jumped across quickly. So I'm going to pull my scissors. I'm going to trim this down. Just trim that extra thread. Trim it so it's level with the edge of the zip tape. I've backstitched beginning and end of each tab. So it shouldn't come undone. Scissors upside down. Thought that was weird. Hang on. Too many little threading. Next, I'm going to add on these magnetic snaps. So I've got two magnetic snaps and I've got four little off cuts of Decaville Heavy or Decaville One. Um, this is to support the magnetic snap on the fabric so as it has a little bit of extra support there. So we've got one of our outer fabric, our main fabric, pattern piece one. And then I've got the lining fabric from pattern piece two, which is going to be the front outer pocket. Now on your pattern pieces, there are marks for your placement for the magnetic snaps. If you haven't printed the pattern pieces or because they're rectangles, you can just measure in. There are the measurements there for the magnetic snaps to go in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to iron on my little pieces of Decaville Heavy onto the back of my lining fabric from the front pocket and to onto the back of my cork here for the extra support. And then I'm going to add my snaps. So I'm going to add that first. There we are. So I've got my Decaville attached to the back of that. Taking a washer. I've already found the center points. I don't know if you can see those. I can see them. I'm just going to put my washer over the center point using my marking tool. Just mark the two little lines there. Same on this one. Cutting mat and my craft knife. I'm going to very carefully just slice through the fabric, take your time, there's no hurry. Make a smaller hole first, you can always make the hole bigger, be careful not to make the hole too big to begin with, otherwise your snaps will wiggle around. If you do make them too big, you can always use something like fray jack or some fabric glue, something to seal them, stop it from fraying. There we go, we'll see how that goes. Now, the outer fabric is where I'm going to put the female part of my magnetic snap, which is this one. And then the male part I'm going to put on the lighter lining fabric. So I'm just going to push that 
right? A mushroom. You can bend these out or in, it's entirely up to you, whichever you prefer. I prefer to bend them out. The other one. Okay, that's those attached. Let's just do the ones on the lining. Okay, so I'm going to move my cutting mat out of the way. Um, right, let's do the lining ones. Put that through there. just to make sure yep that's in place nicely always check this now and then if there's any problems you can always recut a new piece don't leave it until the last minute just in case it's not quite right but that looks okay to me perfect let's move on to the next part so let's make a start on the strap for the clutch bag so because these are cork and we're going to be doing raw edges I'm just going to burn edges just to get rid of any little fuzzy bits on the backing court doesn't fray but the backing does it really helps to do this to put these both wrong sides together so because we're doing a raw edge and clip them in place any irregularities I'll trim up afterwards Oops, it was there. more or less correct right I'm going to top stitch around all the edges obviously basting at the sides but top stitching all the way around with a three and a half millimeter stitch length so it's 3.5 millimeter stitch length and about an eighth of an inch or two three millimeters from the edge let's get my scissors trim up the edges oh, so trim up the threads now i'm just going to trim up any little extra pieces Bring up my cutting board and my rotary cutter i'm just going to freehand this a nice sharp blade so it's okay it's overhanging from the other side a little bit here finished and put that over to one side. Let's make the V-shaped outer pocket. So I've got my outer pocket piece and the overlay. So I'm just going to put the overlay on top of the outer. So that's right side up, right side up. Clip that in place. And I'm going to stitch around all of the sides using a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. And again, it's an eighth of an inch or two or three millimeters from the edge all the way around. There we are. Super cute. I really love this. Next, we're taking our 
pocket piece lining, the one that we put the magnetic snaps on earlier. And we're going to lay these right sides together and clip those in place. We're going to stitch across the top here, down across the V to the other side using a three millimeter stitch length and it's going to be a quarter inch or six millimeters from the edge. If you've got a really wide press of foot, Lauren suggests that you actually add your magnetic snaps after this step. So if you're a little bit concerned, you can add these later. And there we are, so let's chop these threads. And I'm going to trim down this seam allowance to about an eighth of an inch or just about half of the seam allowance. Now, that's trimmed down, so I'm going to cut into where this V shape is just a little. It will help to be able to turn it through and get a really nice sharp point. But you do need to be careful not to cut through the stitches. I'm going to roll the seam, make it nice and flat. Be careful not to pull it too much, you can see my stitches are showing through just a little. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back through and I'm going to do a second row of stitching just inside the first row on the seam allowance and that should stop my, stri my stitches from pulling too much. There we go, you can see it's just ever so slightly on the inside of the original stitch row. Okay. Let's try turning that through again. So find the points, turn them through. That is a little bit better. Make sure we fold the lining behind really well so it's not peeking through. If you're using something other than cork, you can go and you can obviously iron this from the front. I'm just going to pull this down as best I can and I'm going to clip it at the bottom to keep it from jumping up. Now I'm going to take that to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch around that top edge to stop that from rolling forwards and to make it look really pretty. And I'm going to do that with a 3.5 millimeter stitch length, three millimeters or an eighth of an inch from the, the edge here. Okay, so that's top stitched into place. So now that won't roll, that looks nice and pretty. If you um, have a wider press of foot and you're going past these magnetic snaps, maybe use something like a zipper foot would be quite good. Be really, really careful as you're saying past these magnetic snaps though. Okay, if you haven't added your magnetic snaps already, then you can do that now. If you waited because you were a little bit concerned, you can add those now. Make sure though that you mark your um place for the magnetic snap before you sew it together because otherwise then your measurements will be out a little bit. So make sure you actually mark it before you do the process that we've just done. Okay, so once you've added your magnetic snaps, if you haven't already, then we're going to base together the other three sides. Let's take our outer pocket piece, snap our pocket in place, she says in place here yeah. and then we're going to baste around the three sides holding those pieces together 
Now, if you wanted to, you could just baste all these pieces together in one. I like to baste the pocket pieces together first and then baste them onto the outer. And then I know that things aren't wriggling around too much, especially because it's cork and cork tends to be quite spongy and moves around a bit. So that's that outer panel done. Let's get started on the back panel. So the back panel is where we're going to add our clutch strap. Now I'm going to use the front panel to help me measure where I'm putting this on the back. What I don't want to do is have this overlapping with this because what I'll, you'll find is that then it tends to get quite bulky. So I think I'm going to make sure that it's actually just below. Let's do that and see what happens. So just side by side. My chalk marker. I'm just going to mark where the bottom is on there. Let's move it over to that side. Let's mark. My chalk marker is running out. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I've got my two marks here. And what I'm going to do is put my clutch strap there. Now, remembering that I'm going to lose a little bit of seam allowance at the top and at the bottom. So actually, I think that should work out quite nicely. It should be okay by the time we're done. It might be a little bit low, but I think it will be okay. So let's base that on, on both sides. All right, trim the threads again. And that's the back panel done. Next, let's do the internal pocket. I'm gonna add a zip onto mine. You can do this pocket on the outside of your bag if you wanted to. Um, I haven't done that because obviously I've put the clutch strap on the back, but you could do it if you wanted. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this I've got one of my pocket piece and one of my main lining panels. I'm gonna find the midpoint of both. Going to fold them in half, a crease, fold this one in half, increase that, now I'm going to measure down from the top edge a distance and then the same distance from the top edge of here. I'm going to make a mark. So let's take my ruler. First mark is just so as I know where I'm putting my pocket panel and obviously I'm lining up my two centre creases. There's that. Next, I'm going to measure down a distance and then create a box for my zipper pull, for my zip. There we are. So I've made myself a box. Now I'm going to line up with the marked line that I made earlier, lining up my center points, right sides together. Okay, so my main lining panel is right side up, my pocket panel is right side down, everything's lined up nice and even. I'm gonna put some pins in place. Just so that doesn't move, I take it across to the sewing machine. Now I'm going to sew around the outside of the box using a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. Well, let's trim up those threads. Take our pins out. Now, I'm going to bring back my cutting board and my rotary cutter. 
and I'm going to cut through this center line through both layers. Okay, so I'm just going to do it freehand. Okay, so let's cut through there, and then I'm going to use my scissors to cut the V shape at either end, getting as close to my stitching in the corners as I possibly can without cutting through the stitches. That will help us to get a nice clean edge. Let's just okay. Now that I've done that, I'm going to fold, just finger press all of the edges where I've stitched. This sometimes helps when you're pushing things through. If you want, you could iron it. That would be okay. Let's take this three to the other side. And I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to press that really, really well. If you find that you've got some pulls in the corner, then you can just turn it back through and just snip a little bit closer to your stitching in the corners. Of course, being careful not to pick, go through your stitches. Okay, let's just iron this into place. So I've got my zip with the pull on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use some double-sided tape just to run along the outside edges to hold it in place for me. Now, cut it more or less the length of the hole that's there. And I always tear double-sided tape because it makes it easier to separate. If you cut it, it's really, really difficult to get the backing paper off. Whereas if you tear it, it leaves you, as you can see it's coming up anyway, it leaves you a nice edge to be able to get hold of and it comes away quite nicely. Okay. Let's lay that right side down. Now, I've got to get this the right way around. Let's just check that's open, that's closed. So actually, I want it this way. Pull my teacup through. Line that up. So the zipper pull when closed is over to the left. And just line that centrally within the space and when you've done that we're going to top stitch around all four edges of the box using a 3.5 millimeter stitch length back stitching really really well beginning and end or alternatively you can leave the tails on it and pull those through to the back and knot them at the back and glue them in place this over. I'm going to trim down my excess zipper tape here. I'm going to leave some there but I'm going to trim it down out the seam allowance. Trim that a little more. Taking our other pocket panel I'm going to lay that right side down. So this pocket panel right side up, we should be looking at the back of the zip. And I'm going to lay our other pocket panel right side down and clip that in place. Okay. 
Now I'm going to sew around all four sides. So actually, I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to sew from the front because it makes it a little bit easier. So starting from the front, I'm going to pull this out of the way and put my zipper pull into the middle so as I know it's out of the way. And if you want, you can put some tape on that, just some washi tape or something, just to keep it out of the way so as it doesn't move around. So I'm going to fold this side back. I'm going to start at this bottom corner, come up the side, pivot round, fold this piece back, sew across the top, pivot round again, folding back, down this side, pivot, and across the bottom, right the way back to the start. And I'm going to do that with a 2.5 millimetre stitch length and a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to, oh, pull that bit up. Okay, I'm just going to trim down all of these edges. And there we are. So that's finished, all trimmed up. I did catch this a little bit. That's okay. Doesn't matter. I'll just trim that down. It won't make a difference. It's okay. There we are. Let's check that works. Cute little pocket. Right, let's get everything sewn together. For sewing everything together, we need our outer panel, the one with the front pocket. We need our lining fabric, the one without the pocket, again, so it's the, this one. And also we need our zip with zip pull attached, don't get to attach your zip pull, and that's the one with the zip tabs that we sewed earlier. And put this to one side for the moment and we're going to start working on the front panels so I'm going to fold it in half across the top I'm just going to make a little snip tiny little snip there to find my center point now if you're using something like quilting cotton it's easy just to fold in half and crease there but because this is cork it probably won't keep Crease. And we're going to do the same with a zip tape. Just going to do a tiny little snip. Sew the tabs together. Tiny little snip in your zipper tape. The zipper tape usually is fine to take little snips out of. The only ones that usually have a problem are the ones that are the striped zipper tape. So be really, really careful um, cutting little notches out of the striped zipper tape. Maybe use something like chalk to mark the midpoint. Now that I've done that, now I need to make sure that my zipper pull is over to the left when it's closed. So that's on the left. And I'm going to put the zipper tape right side down so it's right sides together with my outer panel we'll line up those two notches that i've cut and clip that in place and i'm going to clip that all the way along the length Keeping my zipper pull out of the way, so I'll need to move it up and down while I'm stitching. I'm going to sew across the top edge with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just basting together the zip and the outer panel. And I'm going to use a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. Now taking my lining fabric, again I'm going to find the midpoint across the top. A little snip. There we go. And I'm going to put that right sides together with the outer. Okay, so we've got the outer right side up, the lining right side down. Lining up my midpoints. I'm going to sew from this side because it's actually easier when you're working with cork or any thicker fabrics to have the thicker fabric face up and the lighter fabric underneath. It tends to pull through on your feed dogs a little bit better if you do it that way around. So if you find sometimes that you're 
lighter fabric bunches up. If you put the heavier one on the top, that doesn't happen quite so much. I'm going to stitch across the top here with a quarter inch seam allowance. That's about five or six millimeters. And I'm going to use a three millimeter stitch length. While I'm stitching, I'm really, really careful to move my zipper pull backwards and forwards out of the way. I don't want to be going over that. You will probably need a zipper foot to complete this. Okay, let's just check that I've done that correctly. That looks okay. Let's trim up thread ends. Now we're going to open this out. Increase it nicely. And with the seam behind the outer panel, I'm going to top stitch right across here using a 3.5 millimeter stitch length. And I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch or two or three millimeters from that seam that we've just created with the zip. If you want to top stitch your lining as well, you can, but you will need to start your top stitching where the zipper tab is, so about half an inch or um, about one and a quarter centimetres in from the side, so as you're not stitching down these edges. Okay. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold this open and I'm going to top stitch across the top here. Hold that back. Now, we're going to do exactly the same thing with the other side. Outers, right side together, clip in place. And then we've got our lining fabric, we've already found our centre point. Make sure if you don't have a directional print, make sure you've got it up the right way and you haven't got your pocket too far down because it's upside down. Mine's okay. There we are. And again, a quarter inch or six millimetre seam allowance across here, making sure that you move your zipper pull out of the way as you're sewing. Please keep an eye on where your zipper pull is. Okay. And again, we're going to top stitch across the top here, keeping the lining fabric over to the other side, unless you want to top stitch the lining as well. In which case, again, if you do want to top stitch the lining, you'll need to start from where the zipper tabs are. Okay. So I'll take this across, top stitch it with a 3.5 millimeter stitch length, an eighth of an inch or two, three millimeters from the edge. This is starting to look really cool. Now, I'm a little bit concerned that this maybe isn't strong enough. So I think if I were to do this again, I would probably add a little bit of Decaville Heavy or something else in the middle. But since I've already sewn it on, I'm not going to take it apart again. But what I am going to do is I'm going to stitch a decorative box on each side so actually the only piece that's moving is the center part where you can put your hand through so I'm just going to stitch down these two pieces before I close everything up so I'm going to measure in make sure I do it at the same distance on both sides get my pencil and I think I'm going to measure in two inches from either side 
So two inches is about five centimetres. Oh. Let's just do that again. Actually, we're overhanging slightly on this side. So make sure, if like me, your strap is slightly overhanging, make sure you're taking it from the edge of the main panel, which it is there. And now it's there. So I'm just going to stitch a box around there just to hold it a little bit more. And then there's more than enough space between here and here to put your hand through. That's much better. I'm much happier with that. Okay. Oh, that's worked out well. Okay, so let's sew this together. So what we're going to do is we're going to, oh, let's start like that. Outers, right sides together lining fabric right side together okay. the first thing we need to do is make sure that our seams are joined so making our first of all let's open this zip so we've got our zipper pull in the middle make sure that's open otherwise you won't be able to turn your bag through so make sure your zipper pull is out of the way then we're going to line up our two seams and clip them in place, making sure that the zip and the zip tab are going in towards the lining and not sticking out towards the outer. They're going in towards the lining. You can see these are lined up. This is really important because you will notice if it isn't. So let's put one clip that side and one clip that side. Now I'm going to clip around all of four sides making sure on this side i'm also lining up my seam allowances really really well with my seams let's line that up making sure again that my zip tab is going in towards the lining and not this side towards the outer I'm going to clip all the way around, but I'm going to leave myself a turning gap at the bottom here of about five inches. So I'm going to start sewing here and I'm going to backstitch really, really well. Upside, all the way up here. I'm going to backstitch really well where the seam is and go around all the way along the bottom back up the other side, back stitching here again where this seam is really well, down this side and across to about here again back stitching really really well because when we turn the bag through these two points here will be under a lot of stress. All clipped, I've left my turning gap I'm going to sew this together with a three millimeter stitch length around the cork side and a 2.5 millimeter stitch length around the quilting cotton side. And I forgot to say that I'm going to be back stitching really well where the handle is on the back and also where the pocket is. So I'll back stitch here well and here and here. You'll be able to feel when you're going over those parts. Because I'm using cork and because it's a thicker fabric, I'm actually going to do a second row of stitching just inside the first row, just to stop those stitches from pulling too much. Just another little wonky line inside the first one. Now I'm going to trim down all the excess cork and in the corners I'm just going to cut as close to this corner edge as I can so as we get a nice neat corner when we turn through. 
I did forget to tell you as well that when I got to these pieces here, where it's a little bit more bulky, I did use my hump jumper. Come down the corners first. I'm not trimming this bottom edge. I'm going to leave this as it is because it makes it easier when you come to stitch up the inside. So what we will trim down the rest by about a half. Okay, let's turn this through. So I'm going to reach in, unzip, oh no, that's the pocket, unzip the main panel. I'm going to make sure I'm not inside the pocket, there we go. Push the corners in towards the centre first, pull those corners through. And then from the bottom, push through those corners. It's a little bit fiddly. There we go, there's one corner. Let's try and find the other one. There it is. Right, I'm going to take this to the iron and I'm going to fold in the edges of my pocket case. Actually, if I, my fingers either side of that hole and pull, it will naturally fall into place. I'm going to take it across to the iron and I'm going to iron that in to make it easier to sew in a minute. There we are, so that's been ironed neatly and now I'm just going to stitch across the bottom edge there with a 2.5mm stitch length closing up that hole. The last threads to trim, two, four, let's peg this in, let's zip up that zip as well. back out the other way. Flatten it all down a little bit. really happy with how that came out that's worked really well so if you didn't have decorable heavy or you didn't want to fill it just stitching down those sides has actually worked really really well it's given it some nice strength so quick look inside pocket if you didn't want to do a pocket there are instructions for doing card slots as well so you could choose to do those Victoria Whistlet as a touch. <laughs>